welcome back to the program on this interview segment. Now, joining me is Esther Nema, who is an entrepreneur. Esther, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, tell us something about yourself first. Uh, my name is Esther Nema. I am a journalist, actress, editor at the moment. I'm editing. Uh, I work for iClicks Kenya as an editor, subtitle editor. Then I'm an entrepreneur. I've been since... Uh, 2013 yeah. until now, doing various kinds of projects, starting and initiating different kinds of projects. And so, once an entrepreneur, always, an entrepreneur. <laughs> always one, yeah. You seem to be wearing lots of hats. Tell us <laughs> about do. your entrepreneurship hat. My entrepreneurship. Well, uh, I started entrepreneuring at it just two years after school, when okay. I'd, I'd, I'd worked for, for a while. And then uh, one time I just finished one contract was over and I thought what, what do I want to do because then I was a presenter and not full, fully like a full-time presenter to, as just doing shows so I had a lot of time in my hands and I said what can I do with the much time that I have in my hands and I started thinking and exploring different types of you know things that I could do then um, then it started being a path that I really, really wanted to do. Like, that's all I wanted After to do. After lots of thoughts. <laughs> yes. Okay. I wanted to now be an entrepreneur. I wanted to start uh, entrepreneurship. And at that moment, it wasn't out of a purpose or a cause that I wanted to really support. But it was because entrepreneurship was the in thing to do <laughs> at that moment. And like, every amazing person is an entrepreneur. So you want every to young be, person is yeah, an entrepreneur. Every, to be successful, yeah. up to many entrepreneurs. Exactly, entrepreneur. yeah. And okay. everyone is like, all millionaires, all all these people who are at the top, they're mm. all entrepreneurs. And so you're like, you want to do it. You want your name somewhere on it. Okay. So, yeah. But it's been a great journey. So, what are you working on now? At the moment, I'm working on content. Uh, we are reforming, we formed, not reforming, we formed a network okay. of, of people in different areas, especially in production. People that entail to creating content, say the producers, the, the writers, the actors, the presenters, mm -hmm. who would have otherwise not had, you know, a team. Mm -hmm. We are creating that team for ourselves, mm -hmm. and I think it's the most amazing thing where now we come together and we're like, you know what? I can't survive on my own, <laughs> even if. So, uh, what's basically the name of the the team that you've created? For em one creating Empire Content Network. Empire Content yes, Network. Empire Content Network. So, how big is the team so far? At the moment, we are about 15 that okay. we can speak of, the ones that are on board and know what's happening and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But we envision probably a time when we'll be 100, 1,000. That's, that's our vision, to have as many people as possible. Yeah, as possible. So the 15, are you only, all of you in Nairobi or some are outside Nairobi? Maybe? Nairobi, Nairobi. Nairobi I think we, we are starting with our locality at the moment, where okay. we are mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, hopefully we will traverse through places and different places because there's no limit to this country but our projects will not be limited to here okay. we want to to go as far wide as, as, as the, the entire borders. Kenya yeah because equally these needs are not just here but yeah. actually across the board many young people are looking for a team mm. to, to, to come together and do work together here so the 15 of you, yeah. how did you meet? Is it through referrals or through the <laughs> social media or went to an event and oh, met? Yeah. How uh, did you meet? What happens is, in life you meet people. Like, I'm, I'm sure probably if you've gone through the entrepreneurship journey, like you're constantly looking for partners or people you, you've worked with forever, right? But, um, and you always imagine that it's far-fetched from people that you already know. Strange thing, all of us ha are connected in one way to one person, yeah. Like uh, some of them, we went to, to school in Desta. Some of them, uh, we went to school in primary. Like two of them were my classmates in primary. So they're basically Others, some people Desta. you've known previously. Yeah, we've known previously. So oh, okay. it's to realize, but we've had this conversation of what can we do together. So let's say I had this conversation with you at one point in 2011, and we forgot about it. Or, and they had uh, the same conversation with another person in 2008 and then we all come together and we're like you know what we've talked about it separately how about we come together all of us and now actually do it you know action you know how you have that resolution you now like actualize it <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah now for now empire content yeah so far what maybe have you worked on mm. at the moment we've, we've just shot we've shot uh, production our first production uh, is it a film or something <laughs> no it's a, it's a talk show a talk it's show. a talk show having conversation truth 
truth conversation called ukweli wangu which uh, we hopefully we should be launching in february or or uh, that's or next March. that's next month huh? yeah ah. next month so or the other we, we uh, hope to now launch mm-hmm. uh so we just shot we just shot we, we we gathered and we did probably like seven to ten episodes mm-hmm. to ten episodes for a start, for a start and yeah. then probably now in march we do now the second season so we're, we're really excited i hope really i'll be invited for the launch yeah you <laughs> should yeah we want to do a, a next a party a party for you to just yeah. launch and just go out there by, by yeah. so now that <coughs> you've already worked on a first uh, project yeah what were some of the challenges maybe you went through when doing that project. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, for many entrepreneurs, <laughs> they normally, as you say rightly, yeah. many of them just say that the biggest challenge is capital. Yeah, it uh, is actually. Uh, but initially it was, it was money, but I feel like when you have a great idea and people are excited about it and people are passionate, like there's nothing that beats passion and mm. nothing beats drive. Like you're so passionate about something, you want to see it happen. So we'd come, say, on set and probably it's one of those days. We don't have much. Yeah. We just have our ideas and our dreams. And we're all coming back knowing that each of us has nothing. Mm-hmm. But we're coming on board because we want to make this happen. So we pulled it off somehow. Mm-hmm. We managed to secure a very good location, which is so good and amazing. VIP status. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. We managed to pull, pull over and, and, and get, you know, like uh, one of us already had equipment. Had already had an yeah, in fact, I was coming suit. to that because yeah. you see, in production, yeah. the equipment cost is quite high, and also yeah, hiring is yeah. also expensive. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but you see, what uh, someone says, the, the beauty of leverage yeah. is one person has this, like someone has equipment, but they don't have a team. Uh-huh. Your problem is you have a great idea, but you don't have equipment, or you Another have the person, skill and yeah. you don't have the equipment to operate. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh-huh. Or you have. You, you, we all have something, but we are all lacking something. Mm-hmm. So how can we all ca- collaborate and come up with something that you know we meet each other's needs? Mm-hmm. So then it's not a point where now me as a presenter or me as an actor is coming and asking you for money. I know that I'm building my portfolio. You're also building your no, portfolio. Okay. We've yeah. come together because it's now not a time where now we say I'm using you to build yeah. my portfolio. All of us are growing, so we are all like sort of complementing each other. Complementing each other, yeah. Then other people have other problems. They have money, <laughs> and they don't have ideas. No skill at all. You know, no, no skill, no talent <laughs> but whatsoever. Lots but you of have money. money. Uh. Yeah, so I'm like, if your problem is money and how to use it, then why don't you come on board and let's show you how we can use it and how can we make, make it together. Because mm-hmm. you know? I think a time is coming where we don't want to be people of word. We want to be people of action. And if I'm saying, I'm helping you, we're helping each other. Then still on matters money. Maybe in your venture now, have you gotten somebody who can come in and pump maybe some capital yeah. into the into so empire? Yeah, we've had conversations with people who have been there, like who who've done that. And so for them, the issue of money is is not really an issue. Like if we do need money, for which we've realized actually when you have all this, you don't need. Uh, capital is just an excuse a lot mm. of times mm. usually when you have something great and you really really want it you find Money all ways follow. to do it yeah mm. so uh, when we do and sometimes we usually do say for example we needed to hire lights and sound because we didn't already have but we're hoping eventually we'll, we'll have people who have lights and sound on their own so they come and they want to be the greatest light directors in africa and they want a team mm. we will we'll want such type of of arrangements whereby we come as freely with as minimal cost as possible but we have had like people who are interested in investing and okay. being part of, of, of the project now that you already have the content you yeah. maneuvered some of the challenges yeah. and you're saying that you will be launching mm-hmm. uh, your first project latest by march this year yeah. you already have a market for that content where you're going to sell because now you know yeah. with the digitalization we yeah. realize there's so many yeah. tv sessions but they're, they're just everywhere. playing music, eighty mm. percent music, no content. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's one thing. Uh, I think we had that conversation of where do we want to take our content? Yeah. Is it online? Is it on traditional media? And we're open to as much, mm. you know, as much space as possible. Because I understand one of the greatest challenges for for most media houses is to buy this content because it's pricey. But because we have produced it at very little cost, we just brought in our effort. Eventually, though, we do want to earn. We want to 
we, we want to distribute it to as many avenues as possible that way yeah. it's not so expensive for one production house to buy it because it's widely distributed okay. yeah and so um yeah so we are looking into all the stations possibly traditional as well as uh, the modern modern online which is uh, available yeah. and uh, we always say if worse comes to us if we can go youtube people are making off of a lot from of money viewership, from, yeah. from viewership on youtube okay. because we are very sure about the, the product that we are putting in together and we are very sure about the team that we've brought in together these these are people who you meet them and instantly your heart feels yeah. it's in there they're people full of energy and life and we're having conversations that are about what we went through the young people because it's called the show is called Ukweli Wang. Ukweli. it's our truth what is our truth yeah, we're having these conversations, we're having young people committing suicide every day because they feel they're alone, they're lost, they're unemployed, they're without opportunity and we're coming on board and we're saying, you can hack it. If you're fired, you can, you can, you can do There's it, man. still a way. There's still a way. It's not okay. the end of life. You have a chance to still grow yourself. Yeah. Then also now, uh, you, you're a graduate from this university. Yeah. <laughs> you, said it, uh, you said public relations. Yes, public relations. Yeah. Now, when you completed school, mm. did you see yourself venturing into this, or you are also looking <laughs> like after graduation you'll be some senior manager somewhere in of a blue chip company? <laughs> yeah. Did you see yourself here? Yeah, no. Uh, well, I, it, it never occurred to me entrepreneurship. In fact, I don't think I ever thought I'll, I'll do business or trade. It never occurred to me until one day my dad was saying, "You know, the future is entrepreneurship." And in as, but you see, of course. Even as you graduate, your parents assume that you, you're not really hit big. Because don't tell your you parents you think huh? you're <laughs> amazing. Yeah. You know, they think you're amazing until you realize the world is full of amazing people. Like yeah. people who are talented and skilled and it's very competitive. So in as much as, yes, you start with energy. Because for me personally, I wanted to, to be... Like I wanted to be the government spokesman of the country because wow. that was public relations. But then who was the government <laughs> spokesperson? Al, uh, Mutua. Mutua, the yes. Machakos governor. Yes. So yes. I wanted to take his job. I, I found him so <laughs> fascinating. And so that's what I wanted to do. Okay. But even slowly, slowly, as, as, as I was graduating, I started being very interested in media. And so I started then pursuing presenting opportunities, which I eventually did. And that's how I managed to have so much time in my hands. But... Um, it comes to a time now when I had so much time and my dad was like entrepreneurship is the way to go mm -hmm. and he had already he had done a master's in entrepreneurship and so he's like great things are made by people who start things who innovate so he That's put small. he triggered mm -hmm. he triggered that interest and so when my contract was ending from a certain place and I was getting this other presenting job which would engage me very minimally yeah. I I started looking at it as an option and I wanted to do it and the things that I said, what do I like to do, what, what did I want to give my employer and then how can I do it on my own mm. and so I came up with crazy ideas like I came up, and most of them for me, like my first company which was Bell Enterprise Games event. I just started as a joke and I thought about it. I was like, I was in a neighborhood that's really isolated. Yeah. And I thought, what if we had events and parties? Themed events. Yeah, yeah. themed events. Wow. What if we had festivals? You know, things that you've seen in movies. And I'm like, this place is so dull and quiet. Um, somewhere along Kilimani. It's dull and quiet. We're all in the house. What if we created events yeah. whereby we can all meet each other? And stuff Bring like out that. the entire <laughs> neighborhood. Come, yeah. let's celebrate. Exactly. Yeah, uh, you, you create festivities. Okay. Like even That's the good. old African culture, it was all about festivity. Yeah, people mm. met. Mm. It's like now we're having challenges. Men are not meeting women. They don't know where to find people them. going on social media <laughs> to meet. People, yeah, they are poking others and yeah. like, waving oh, through waving. Facebook. I know someone, but not talking waves literally. Not times. Yeah. yeah, how can we create platforms where people can meet, mm. socialize, interact, and make this a lifestyle? Like okay. you don't need to be depressed because we have events. But I think I was at a phase where I was all about happiness and which i think i am yeah. <laughs> and that was the original idea so i did my first event which was a valentine first the launch and then the valentine's um, event okay now uh, through your education do you think many because you realize many graduates are unemployed yeah. many are frustrated because yeah. they can't get the dream job after graduation mm -hmm. and now you get out of school and you're now pushed you're being told now the opportunities are rare you go into entrepreneurship yeah. start your own business start yeah. your own company apply for tenders <laughs> do you think the current education system mm. really prepares one mm. 
to be an entrepreneur or you just have to get in there, swim through the sharks and find your way out? Well, I feel, I feel it should be incorporated into the education system because it's, it's not as easy. It looks like it's very easy, but I, God knows entrepreneurship is like half of it. You're really broke. <laughs> like you're yeah, living yeah, below the poverty listening, line. Listening to most entrepreneurs, yeah. you listen to their story, you think like it's just a exactly, click of a finger and they made it there. No, yeah. it's not. Because a lot of time is the, you're not aware. Because you, you have all this time. Yeah. You have all this energy, but you're not directed. You don't have a focus. You're going nowhere. Like you, 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 you feel you're busy, and you're literally working on something literally every day, every yeah. day. But you're really going nowhere. Yeah. You know, you're just like you're going into like a straight path, a straight path that's leading to almost nowhere. And every day you're guessing and you're struggling. However, I- entrepreneurship is not really like an option or a choice because yeah. where we're heading, employment. We, we need to be, especially if you have a degree, you need to be the people who come up with these brilliant ideas. And be the job creators. Yeah. yeah. So you, we cannot equally be the problem. You know? So yes, you're thrown into the deep end, but you come up with solutions. Like what I, I, I believe, I personally, the greatest lessons I learned is because I took that risk of entrepreneurship. And in, I cannot say, of course, it would be great that it, the, the education system needs to put it yeah, into in the, the curriculum. So that you so come that out prepared. trained, yeah, ready. Yeah. You know. So that a year mm-hmm. down the, the road or two years down the road and you're not getting a job, suicide is the last option in your mind. Because mm. you see a lot of people are frustrated. You know, some of us maybe we are so strong. Young like people never today have out. ulcers because yeah. of ulcers thinking Or high so blood much. pressure yeah. at 24. Mm. But if you tell someone that you have the solution to getting out of there, yeah. whatever it is that you're going to offer your employment employer and you write on your cv you can do it mm. you really should be able to do it okay. and so yeah so i think me yeah, i even learned i learned all skills <laughs> i never had you never had like that yeah, yeah. so okay. yeah but it would be great if we could incorporate it into the, system, into the system however i know so many people so many people who made it and they went through these systems and they didn't know what to do like a lot of stuff you learn in life is not from class. It's the self, self So you're saying that you also, other than education, you also be willing books, to learn yeah, new skills. Yeah, get mentors, mm. learn things that you didn't know before. And you'd be very surprised with every step. Because now what happened after I started this second initiative, it's mm. so different from what I went through the first year. It's so different and more faster. Yeah. Now, Esther, I want you to look straight to that camera. Yeah and encourage a graduate, probably <laughs> someone who is yeah. a graduate from university, mm-hmm. maybe frustrated, Person. has not landed his dream job, just tell them something. Okay, <laughs> okay well, I know as a graduate, you, you go through quite a lot. First of all, because you believe you've worked so hard. You really, like, you've really worked so hard and you deserve, you know, a space. But truth is, when you come out here, everyone is amazing, everyone is brilliant, and you meet, it's very competitive. And not that you won't eventually get a dream job, because right now I'm, I'm working and at a place that I really, really love. But you can't wait for that moment. If that moment is not already there, you create that moment. And you must believe that within you is the gut and the ability to create whatever it is that you imagine. And believe me, um, one thing that my, my, my dad told, taught me, when I was really struggling and trying to, to find my way, is like the people who go through this, some of these toughest moments in terms of finding their way, uh, even the people that probably he, he met before in his life, eventually when you look, they start this very tough entrepreneurial journey and persist and persist and persist. They're the people who now actually, they're the who owns Kenya. Like eventually you, you do make it. And so keep trying, keep striving. Never wa- let a day pass with you doing nothing. So as you wait for employment, or if you don't choose it at all, because entrepreneurship is a great cause. It's a, you, you're being called to creating opportunities not only for yourself, but actually for everyone. So it's a, it's a great path to go by. And so, yeah, just be bold and take it. And go grab the world by... Thank you, Esther, yeah. for all that. <laughs> by the <Now>, hand. <laughs> that was Esther Nema, an entrepreneur from Empire Content, and also at Bella enterprise themed events now that's all what you had for you on this week's edition of business tuesday my name is edinadwa stay tuned on ltn